Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I wanted to talk about the fear of being cheated on. I feel like the fear of cheating yourself is a bit of a separate fear and it comes with its own beliefs and compulsions. So I want to take another video for that. Today, I only want to cover this. If you want to come in for one-to-one -one coaching calls with us or attend a webinar uh, that we have every week on Tuesday, you can click the WhatsApp link in the description below and Phil will guide you further and we can help you get started on your recovery journey and have an in-depth look at everything that's happening. So with the fear of being cheated on, I feel like there, like, I really personally think that there also has to be like a perspective and an angle that we have to bring in order to understand cheating itself, right? And why it happens as well. Because what human beings are doing is they're seeing cheating as an uh, as an act, right? And then they are immediately like, oh, cheating, bad thing, completely like you are someone who's just canceled, right? You're someone who is just like completely off the table now. And there's there's not much of a like complex understanding that is brought to the act of cheating itself. And the reason that it's important is because I think in general, when uh, when any human being behaves in a way that we deem as uh, disappointing or hurtful or upsetting, or just like us thinking that it's bad, oftentimes we're not really looking at like the the logical steps behind it, right? Why did that thing occur? And I'm not saying you have to go down a rabbit hole of trying to analyze it to, to death. But yes, what we do have to look at is a little bit like what brought a person to this point to do this, right? Because then whatever act it is that has upset you or hurt you or you, you thought you think is like really bad, then it doesn't seem like that out of the blue. And therefore that, because when it's out of the blue and it seems like something has happened and oh my God, and then there's that visceral reaction. But when we bring a certain kind of understanding to it, not saying that you think, oh, it's okay. I mean, I understand why it happened now, but that obsessive kind of really intense visceral kind of emotion, that sharp raw emotion that comes with it, that completely takes over us. And then we can't think about anything else that gets toned down and that needs to be toned down because if let's say at some point in life you do come across a situation where you have been cheated on then you also want to be able to deal with it in a bit of a yes obviously emotional way but also in a bit of a pragmatic way as well because if you don't have any pragmatism attached to it then you might end up making the situation far worse as well uh, if you are ever cheated on so that pragmatic approach comes with trying to also rationally understand why certain things happen. So if I were to just like hypothetically speak just uh, freehand right now, why is why does cheating happen? Well, there can be a multitude of reasons for it. Does not justify cheating itself. Again, I'm repeating, it does not justify cheating, but it can at least slightly help bring a bit more of a complex and gray understanding to why it happens. So it can be because someone was indulging in a lot of alcohol or drugs, right? And that then played into them chasing another kind of high, which is in, in an intimacy way with someone, right? It, it, it brings that other kind of thrill element. Someone might be struggling with their mental health, their anxiety and depression. A lot of people at times do a lot of um, risky things or they do a lot of um, disapprovable things when 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 they're struggling with that, right? Um, that could lead them to that. Someone could be an addict in terms of uh, pursuing uh, intimate encounters, right? That also is a thing. Uh, someone might be super, super unhappy in a relationship. Maybe their partner is someone who is, I don't know, criticizing them all day long, right? And they're looking for some kind of validation or appreciation or approval and therefore they do something like that. Now, again, I'm not saying that any of these things make cheating okay, but when you go through the a little bit of a logical understanding of what really drove a person to that, you can see exactly the steps as to why it happened and not just as, oh, this person cheated, they're a terrible person and therefore like I can't ever look at them the same way. 
you have to be able to bring some something to a little bit of a middle ground in terms of your own understanding and how you feel about it like and if you really think about it how many people do you know have been cheated on they found out about it and also are in the same relationship you probably know someone at least one person or at least two people in your life who has been cheated on and they stayed with that person still even after finding out about it it may have caused their relation to be relationship to be a bit rocky or something may have obviously it drops aboard and there's mistrust and all those things happen but after that they they choose to stay and they're like okay we need to work on this and we'll move forward on this and see where it goes we all know that person i can think of a couple of people right now that i know like that right because because things aren't aren't as straightforward as that and also this notion that once a cheater always a cheater and this is a deal breaker for me if someone cheats on me then i can never forgive them i can never see them that like if we have even before something has happened if we have pre decided that this is what we're going to do we might end up going towards unhelpful behaviors ourselves as well so think of someone you are married to and you have i don't know three children with them for example and they end up cheating on you now after like several years of being married uh i was like 10 years 12 years whatever of being married if the other person is actually then also putting an effort into let's say changing themselves they're like you know i think there is underlying issues i think i need to really address them i think i i'm really like this is not me i don't want to ever do this etc etc right and they really want to make an effort into like resolving and earning back your trust and doing all those things like you have three children with them and the children also would obviously want like both parents to be together and you actually see that after this mistake which is a really big mistake after this big mistake this person is actually going to change as well then maybe a good idea might be to go through that rough patch of like a year or whatever but then to go back to where things were between you two right of course if it keeps becoming like a then it, if it happens again and again and of course then that's a separate thing as well but like at times a lot of times in fact it happens that people just it happens once and then people immediately feel regretful and they're like i don't want to do this again that happens so often right so again i'm not saying that there's there should be a hard set rule that you need to still be with the person who cheats on you i'm not saying that as well you can leave them because obviously there are so many other factors that have to be considered over here but also it does not also need to be that oh as soon as this cheated i need to leave right now right because you have to really look at your circumstances you have to look at like and each situation is different right there can be 10 examples in front of me of couples where one person has cheated on the other and i think my view about each of them will be different because it really depends on what are other factors that are happening do they have children or not do they um is have have there been other problems uh with that as well and you really have to look at look at it situation to situation because it's not just as straightforward as oh this person cheated i think you should leave them um there's sons more to consider so bringing that understanding with to cheating helps and also then see situations in a more contextual way which is really important when it comes to real human relationships because again real life relationships are complex real life itself is complex and complicated um trying to have blanket rules about things usually is not super helpful um that's not at least that's not how i live my life like uh once someone one once asked me on a one to one call if i have any uh like set rules when i uh, when i'm dating right um to be honest i don't have any set rules i if you ask me i literally don't have any set rules um i see things and i, I see every person that i go on a date with i i see that separately and i see that in its own context um because i i mean i'm someone who's pretty adaptable i get along with all sorts of people i can get along with someone who is like super outgoing for example and adventurous and i can also really get along with someone who is more of a homebody as well i can i can really get along with them too 
and it, it really depends on different situations and what the other person is, what their story is, what kind of personality they have, what is what I'm looking for in that specific moment. So not having certain rules is, in fact, like it's not something that scares me or intimidates me. It actually makes me feel far more free and far more flexible in my thinking and far more adaptable in my thinking as well, because then I'm not going in with like a strict criteria of this person needs to meet this, 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 this criteria. And if one of those things is not met, he's out. Like, I, I, I can't do that. Like, that's, that for me does not make any sense because then I'm already, I'm already going in with a, I'm already going in ready to be dismissive. Um, I'm already going in with the mindset of like waiting for that one thing to discard that person. So there's, I mean, again, all of this, I, I mean, I've just spoken 10 minutes on why understanding like cheating and bringing a complex understanding to it is important. Um, and this is exactly why, like it, there, there's, there's so many benefits to that. Um, and again, it's not that it needs to be, you need to justify it or it needs to be something more forgivable. I'm not even, I'm not even excusing that. Again, there's a difference between accepting something and trying to understand it versus excusing it. They're, they're two very different things. Um, so with that, moving forward, I also want to look at some of the fears that are attached to fear of being cheated on because ultimately that's what matters the most. And those are the fears that are then driving us to do our compulsions as well, which I'll talk about um, as I go on. So the first thing is, uh, look when you were look, looking at our fears, right? So there's a fear of being played, being manipulated, uh, being made a fool of, looking stupid after being you're, you've been cheated on, right? And the thought process can often be like, if I am cheated on, then I will feel like such a fool to myself, like, and I'll be thinking, how could I let this happen to myself? How could I not be aware or vigilant enough that I let something happen right under my nose? So then I would say, actually, with this, there's also a little bit of a fear of being a fear of self rejection as well that's attached to this because it's like other people may or may not think something about this, but like I will be judging myself really harshly. I don't know if I can look at myself in the same way if I let something like this happen to me and if I let myself be manipulated and played. Right, so the fear of self-rejection is then a big one because it's like you owe it to yourself as a responsibility to show up for yourself and protect yourself and safeguard yourself. Um, but of course, then uh, it's also like if at, at times like something that can be attached to it as well is that if I am cheated on, what will other people think of me? That is definitely there. A fear of rejection, fear of being judged is on that front too. That if people feel like I because I was someone who was professing my love for this person and I thought they were the one and I was telling everyone that I wanted to spend the rest of my life on uh, with them and I was so blind in it. And then people will be judging me for how blind I was and how 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 bad of a, a judge of character I am. And then people will be thinking of like, I chose like such a terrible person to be with. So there's so much that gets gets attached to it in terms of what you're thinking about yourself, what other people will think about this, um, and how the breakup will make you look like. Like a breakup that results from someone cheating on you, what will that look like for you, to yourself, and to society? So it, it, there are so many things that are that you need to break down over there. Then of course, there's also like a fear of long lasting uh, heartbreak. Uh, that that's the same as people having a fear of depression, which I did, or fear of being miserable forever, which again, I did as well. With relationship OCD, like I did not have like a fear of being cheated on or me cheating, but I did have a fear of uh, the other person either not considering me as important or for whatever reason, if the other person is no longer a part of my life, then I will have this like really big void in my life that I can't fill because that person is no longer there and it will feel permanent. So there's that. Uh, the fear of losing the best relationship because if you feel like, oh, this is the one for you, you get really well, you have great compatibility and chemistry and like there's no one else ha that has been like this, blah, blah. So then the fear is like, what if I'm never going to, able, going to be able to find someone like this again? So breaking that fear down as to even if you weren't able to find someone like this, why it wouldn't be so bad. Technically speaking, 
uh, you yes you won't be able to find someone like this because your your dynamic in chemistry with each and every single person is very different it cannot be replicated or be exactly the same so on yes you won't be able to find someone like this just saying um fear of never never finding anyone like that again so again i covered that uh fear of feeling less important so the when anyone is cheated on well actually it's not just cheating like even with relationship ocd as i did i had like this massive insecurity that like in in friendships especially in fact more so in friendships i had it that if i felt like a friend was maybe getting close to someone else a bit more or spending a bit more time with someone else i would feel insecure and i would think that like are they forgetting me am i becoming less important am i becoming a second priority like will will i still be prominent for them in my life and then you know and then i would try to remind my re- remind them of my presence as well so i mean it, which i talk about in compulsions as well so that's a big one um fear of never being able to trust anyone else and losing self confidence um i think again so just that feeling that i will interact with people on dates with absolute mistrust i will be feeling anxious i will be feeling insecure uh, in future relationships again that goes with like a fear of fear fear of being stuck in a certain state of mind fear of being sad forever because you won't be able to find a partner again uh the fear a fear that your dating life and is going to be affected in the future really badly by this because you've been through one where someone has cheated on you uh fear of uncertainty uh i speak this is a fear because when we're doing our compulsions we are essentially trying to get certainty over whether someone has cheated on you or not right so then sur- uncertainty itself becomes a big fear um and our quest for then finding out abs- with absolute certainty in a factual way whether something happened or not is then something that leads us into a lot of trouble um let me cover some compulsions this is going to be a bit of a long video so like just bear with me um a recent i think compulsion that i've seen in a lot of uh, our ocd one to one phone calls is uh following each other's location um on whatever find my iphone or whatever apps there are i don't i don't do that with anyone so i i don't know exactly how it works but uh sharing your location with someone i think that it can be helpful for uh situations where let's say if both of you are going out i don't know partying with someone right and uh partying with your friends or whatever it is and then you you don't if you don't know where the other person will be and just to make sure that while you are inebriated you are able to locate each other sure in a situation like that if you are if you're going for a hike or something and you're going to be taking different trails or whatever having that sure is helpful but if you have it perpetually on then and plus you're in a relationship ocd sufferer who wants to make sure that you know where your partner is at all times not a great option for you so that has to kind of stop happening and if that's happening with you and maybe your partner is the one who initiated that maybe you need to have a conversation that hey this can't work for me i can't do this um right now at least because it's getting compulsive for me um sneaking a look at, at their on their phone um or their social media activity again big one if someone is using their phone uh, your partner or whoever and you're like looking at them looking at it if there's something there or not it's that's another thing um surprise visits or surprise phone calls this is like a big one because if you feel like uh, someone might be cheating on you it's like oh let me try and give them like a surprise visit and just check what they're doing and maybe they're talking to someone when i reach their place or maybe they are with someone when i reach their place etc etc or they say that they're out with a friend and i can see on this location that they're in this location but are they really with a friend let me just drive by and try to look through the window are they with a friend or are they with a friend so like just i mean again that can become extremely compulsive or like surprise calling them and being like hey i was just thinking of you but actually you were trying to make sure that they're not with anyone else or if you can hear someone in the background big one um checking in this is what i so i've just done a video on subtle rocd compulsions this is like a big one in that as well uh just like randomly checking in with people and um 
in in the same way as like calling them or just when they when you know that they are oh, just messaging them and being like hey i'm just checking in everything is going well hope you're having fun who else is there and then we ask sneaky questions just to try to make sure that we know exactly what's happening and there's nothing sneaky going on whereas it's you who's actually being sneaky about seeking reassurance um asking uh, their friends family or other mutual friends that you guys have where they were did you see them go out did they tell you about this like do they have a friend do they like you know just like kind of interrogating a little bit uh setting rules again so this is another one i talked about in the subtle rocd uh, compulsions video as well so setting very like stringent rules on like oh this is what i don't want you to do and that is what i don't want you to do these are all ways of us trying to have certainty and control in a relationship and therefore they and by the way i i do have to highlight this as well with all the compulsions that i'm talking about over here like there is we like i have to give people like a wake up call not to scare them but to actually give them a reality check that the compulsions that you're doing will actually take a very bad toll on your relationship because these things are not just happening innocently and these things aren't just happening in a void like they the other person is noticing that there are a ton of things because people aren't usually like they're not stupid right even if you're trying to be subtle or sneaky they can see that you're trying to check something or you you're trying to interrogate or just have extra information and people do not like that people don't like this feeling of being mistrusted unnecessarily because it makes them feel like a criminal when they even when they haven't done anything and that over time especially that begins to take like a real toll on the relationship it 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 goes really bad um and and i i honestly at times i've had people come in phone calls and their partners have broken up with them because they reassured and seeking confessing and other compulsions got a bit too much for them and i don't blame them because obviously they don't go through ocd so obviously they won't understand what's going on so they they make their choice it, because it can be it genuinely being an ocd sufferer i admit it like it can be very difficult when we're really suffering it can be really difficult to be in a relationship with us because then there's so many rules and regulations and problems and triggers and this and that and avoidance that comes into play with that um compulsive intimacy um this is another thing that people do to try with fear of being cheated on people want to compulsively have intimacy to check is this person still feeling attracted to me do they still have drive and motivation for tonight because if they don't then that might mean that they have been with someone else earlier today or something like that so compulsive intimacy then becomes a way of checking feelings and checking the other person's response and interest and involvement in the entire act of intimacy um looking for smells and signs again like do they smell like someone else is there smoke on them uh do a, uh, is there like any sign of i don't know being a bit like uh, unruly or disheveled you know um all is there is there something i can find in their car that belongs to someone else and maybe that's a, a way that i can find out you know all those things um fear of leaving them alone you don't want them to be alone even when they're going on trips by themselves you feel very uncomfortable and at times you might throw a tantrum about it because it's like why are you going alone you why aren't you going with someone or like why aren't you taking me with you so on um and of course reassurance and confessing i mean that's the a big overarching one and a lot of these things that i've mentioned also fall under reassurance seeking and confessing as well but like if every single time if you are, have a partner who knows you have ocd sure great but that can also be a little bit of a trap because for you as an ocd sufferer then if they know you have ocd you want to keep talking about it and you want to keep telling them that hey i just want to let you know i'm having this thought right now haha ha, it's silly i know it isn't but you know what my thoughts were saying today they were saying that you cheated on me haha ha. and then you're checking for their reaction what they say what they do and of course they'll be like yeah your ocd is silly like it's not you know really this and that and essentially what we're looking for is some way to just like comfort ourselves and just like be like okay nothing bad is happening everything is fine uh they're not seeing anyone else they don't want anyone else etc cetera, etc cetera. so um really have to keep that in check and not be reporting and venting every single thought that you get about cheating and things like that um 
I haven't done, I think, a 25 minute video in a very long time, but um, I will do a video on fear of cheating yourself because I think that comes with its other side of things. But hope this gives you like a little bit of an overview and a bit of a guide on what to work on if you're suffering with this fear. Again, I work, I've work. i worked with a lot of people who have cheating OCD uh, in all sorts of forms. If you ever want to come in for a phone call, would be happy to help out with that as well. Um, guys, I'll see you on another video. See you soon. Bye.